I just don't quite understand that. And the, I guess that I, I'd have to talk to you more, and I'm sure it'll it'll develop as to really why quickly. why you think the differential between online and brick and mortar matters to you as a matter of policy regarding meeting standards and educational issues. That's a local district issue. The second is. And I love your model. I, I think you're right on the money with your model. The day ORCA offers us an algebra class at the local district that we can buy, that's when we start talking about the issue. Right now, all they offer is a comprehensive full-time school to a kid in Salem who doesn't live in Silo, or Sio, in that silo. <laughs> and uh, that, that, I think, is where, actually, you want to talk about where the problem is? That's where the problem is. It's your use of a charter school model for online education. We've got to look at this. If we'll, Let's just say SIO was an enormous success and proved that online education is just a great model. It's time to spread the joy here, and let's, but who's going to manage it? And I think ultimately you're going to always agree it's the local district where the ultimate responsibility for this child education rests. And then you can look at the particulars of the situation you heard this morning and what kind of policy changes you want to make relative to that to allow for increased student choice. But the paradigm on local, when you go to virtual, doesn't work because the technology transcends, especially no. when you go to full-time enrollment in virtual learning. Well, we I don't think the local, it, to me, it doesn't work. So well, we think it does, and we're ready to make it work. We, we certainly need to work with you, but uh, this model doesn't work. This so, model just doesn't work. And the so cost just, thing, by the yeah. way, the cost thing is, I hear from all kinds of people that the cost, they're getting rich <coughs> because they don't have to have bricks, and they don't have to have mortar, and they don't ride buses, et cetera, et cetera. I hear that from many people throughout the state. And if that is the issue, then you say, okay, it's 70 or 80 percent. Operate the program, and that would, but you're saying that's not an issue. It's the wrong but, issue. Well, it's not. just the wrong issue. Well, so this think, is not your issue. This is a different issue. Well, it's good. I guess without trying to resolve this today, we've, we've got the issue in front of us. I think the opportunity for the state, and again, we, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll have a question here, is if it is a lower cost model potentially that creates some efficiencies that we need to take advantage of for the point Jerry made. So That's for example, if, if you can offer a algebra class, which you know just pick a number at, at three three hundred dollars per per semester, something like in that range, which I think is a roughly what the prices are for. That's a potential way of delivering a service for those who want it at a lower cost than perhaps you do it in a traditional fashion. We need to know that and understand that and make sure that our policy framework whatever we're recommending to the legislature, allows schools to gain those benefits so that we can use those dollars in other ways. So I think the question isn't, you know, and, and, and then how you, I would also argue, I think, at this point, we don't know how much this is going to cost five years from now. And the idea that we're going to know, this is, this is going to be discovered because this is a new technology and a new delivery model, and, you know, whatever is happening now may change rather dramatically over time. So we're going to have to think about a policy model that, anticipates change and allows, again, the system to, to, to benefit from that, the, those efficiencies so we can get a lower cost platform out of, the, out of, out of our education system. And, and so we've got to, we need to be thinking about all that as we develop the governance recommendations for right. the legislature. It's making that more efficient system, and, and we think you're, you're right in thinking that, more universally available, mm -hmm. uh, not through some sort of charter system, rather through a district by district availability. And that would be, the mistake would be to continue this model, which is just not working in terms of district by district uh, uh, savings. I mean, it really is a cash, it's a cash cow for districts rather than an efficiency model. And that's, a, that's the wrong picture. You're, you're oh, headed the wrong direction oh, there. I need to right. react. I <laughs> Every, every district right now has the opportunity to contract with all kinds of providers for individual courses right now at good bargain rates. And they choose, not, some, choose some choose to do it, some choose not to. The decision is often based on what they're offering 
And then if they only have 12 people in the class, they don't want two taking the online option. That's certainly a hypothesis, and we should probably examine it as we go into the policy. All right, Nikki, and we'll, this is not this will not be the last word on this topic. I promise. I actually think that what we did talk about goes to the heart of the development of our governance model. The question is that you two are debating. If you're debating, I'll be quiet. No, I don't need to be quiet. But I think I really I think is let's assume that there are some efficiencies as a result of online learning. What is the locus of control mm -hmm. that should decide how those efficiencies are respent? That's and a huge I, I issue. I think what I hear Chuck saying is that's best done at the local level because there are various needs that you know mm -hmm. there are different levels of special ed needs, mm -hmm. there are special transportation needs, size becomes a big issue, different student populations, ELO. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, Jerry, if what you're saying is you don't think we should trust the local schools to do that. I don't know if that's what you're saying or not. I would, I would say that that goes to the heart of the governance model that we put together. Is if indeed this this cost model is within a ballpark, how do we reinvest what might come from that? Uh, some of those decisions might be made as a result of policy, statewide full time. Uh, some of them might be made on the basis of what the local, right. what the local right. needs are. And, uh, you know, we never have given districts more money if they have big high cost things going on. They have to figure out how to work it within mm -hmm. their formula. So that's the argument you're yep. making, Chuck. Yep. So I think, but I think it goes to the heart of our government. Yep. No, and it, it, it's a very big issue. Um, I think we should probably call it quits for today, knowing we're going to come back. Um, we've got Jan has, has laid out, I think, a nice set of issues, many that we've been touching on. We are going to try to systematically walk through this in, in, in fairly rapid order. We'll have a meeting, which I hope will then help us frame efficiently the discussion we have in our next board meeting, where I think we're going to try to really come up with a frame on all this. The one um, quick question for research would be, I think we probably need to think about and imagine how much virtual learning we think might be happening, part, you know, full and especially part-time, say, five, six, seven years from now. My picture, just to be clear, is I think it's going to be a lot. And, and, uh, and in anticipation, I think it's the potential way, again, as we've talked, to provide a, a way to get through a, a serious economic crisis. And so I think we ought to have, as we present our recommendations to the legislature, if that's what we believe as a board, I think we ought to have some evidence that that might be the case, if we think it is. And because this, I think, it's why I think what we're doing is actually what was sort of viewed as at the periphery with these full-time virtual schools that we were dealing with two years ago to something I think could easily become much more front and center for the state as a way of managing through a very difficult economic time. So if that, if you, if you, if you, the board think that's potentially possible, I think we ought to just have that as, as part of our report. Okay.